Hey folks, it's Brian here, and I'm going to be working on my Project 1990 F350 that I bought. Um, so I've got a whole box of parts that have come in from Amazon and Rock Auto. Uh, I will post part numbers in the links. Uh, post part numbers and links in the description um, down below this video. So if you need any of these things, you can pick them up and uh, move your project forward. Anyway, let's go look at the truck, and I'll show you what we're doing today. I'm using my shop gantry crane. If you need to make one of these, check out the other videos. Uh, and um, But anyway, I hung the battery tray up to dry. Uh, it needs a little touch up there with paint. And we're gonna put that in today. So that's, uh, that's today's project. All right, so. We're just gonna get this touched up, make it look as good as possible before we put it in. Rust Oleum is easy to live with, not the best paint, but it works. And um, so what I did is I wire brushed this with a, with a wheel and a grinder, knocked all the loose rust off, painted it with phosphoric acid, which converts the iron oxide into phosphoric ar iron phosphate. So iron oxide to iron phosphate. Iron phosphate is non-reactive in the atmosphere, so that kind of ends that problem. And then it's uh, just prime it and paint it. A, it's a good durable solution um, to dealing with rusty metal. So anyway, um, while this dries, I'm going to go make some cables and you guys can come with and then we'll come back and put this in after this has had a chance to dry. So this was the solenoid wire. It looks a lot thin, if that's a number 12, and then there was some sketchy wiring going on here. No wonder it wouldn't start. Anyway, I ordered some nice welding wire on eBay. I don't know how the seller makes money because they shipped it to me FedEx Express. I didn't pay for that, it was free shipping, so they're losing the bottom of the stuff. Things make you go, hmm. Anyway, let me get this straightened out and I'll be right back. Well, you know what? This is number six wire, and I ordered this for the alternator. Uh, I wanted something that was rated for 100 amps. Um, and uh, I wanted a quality wire. The only thing I would have done differently is order tinned wire, but this will work. So what I'm going to do is get this straightened out and then I'm going to hang it up and let it kind of relax until I'm ready to put it in. All right, we're going to do Project Arama today. So um, they replaced the starter, but the motor spins wrong with the motor it's got a bad solenoid and these are a couple hundred bucks so I just didn't see a point in recycling what's otherwise a good starter so I bought a new solenoid for about 20 bucks and uh, let me get a screwdriver and we'll get this one changed you could do this by hand but um, I'm gonna be lazy and use my power tools This sat with some water in it. That probably didn't help things. So when you apply power to this magnet, it should pull this in, which should kick the starter nose gear out. And that wasn't working, so this is junk. Let me go recycle this. All right, so let's see what the new starter came with, or the new solenoid. All right, so this one works fully. Hmm, that's weird. I was really expecting this to be out. Oh, I guess it pulls. It doesn't matter. And we've got some shims that came with it and an O-ring. I wonder... And we've got 
got some replacement wire bolts. Yeah. Not entirely sure why there's a shim here. Really wish I knew. I don't know why there's an isolator. But we're going to go ahead and just put this in the way it is. And uh, let me go get some thread lock. like having the thread locker on my hands, so I wear gloves when I work with it. I'm sure at some point somebody's going to figure out that gloves are probably bad for the environment. Everything else is bad for the environment these days, so why not gloves too? So, Intentionally not using the impact wrench to finish these because I just want them about as tight as I can. Alright, so at this point, what should happen is this goes here. Let me go see what size this wrench is and I'll be right back. nut but we're going to use 13 millimeter socket because that's what we have laying around and I realized that I'm using a lock washer and I'm chasing it with thread locker but I just don't have a whole lot of faith in inexpensive Chinese hardware and diesel engines are very vibratory. So I've got a dinged thread right there. Um, let me go get a screwdriver and fix that.
So what we're going to do is we're going to open this back up. Maybe not. We'll try a thread in the file. So the other thing you can do is take the existing one off. All right, I gotta go find a half inch socket or box wrench. Exactly as it should. So, what we're going to do is use this one to cut threads off. Seven sixteenths. I'll be right back. So that that cleared that issue. And imagine if you were doing this underneath the truck, how irritating this would be.
Hopefully at this point we will be able to get this on.
So it appears that the other bolt has the same problem on the threads at the end. It looks like this was dropped or just abused in transit. So here's my little tag. That way I know exactly what this came off of. And I can add it to my stash of shit that I'll never touch. All right, back in a minute. So the driver door was down when I got it. And I discovered that the regulator was laying in the bottom of the door with a motor that was a dead short. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Anything mechanical can bite you. Yeah. Please buy many more of our parts. They are cheaply made. Thank <laughs> you. 
this little jump starter thing from Harbor Freight. It's five years old, so it's thoroughly worthless at this point. is to just come behind it and clip over top of it from the side and that makes contact electrically and then we'll clip this end and then we can turn this back on and if we were to flip these around Pretty sure we can run it back in the other direction. So there we go. We fixed the window regulator with a new motor again. $20, $25 part, no big deal. That's actually a really good use of this tired little jump starter thing. Um, so at this point we'll put all this away, put this back in the truck, and I think it's time to work on the battery tray. So when I took this apart, it was missing two bolts down here. So I've got the clips, and I'll have the link to these in on Amazon where you can get replacements. Those are a different size, so let me go get the right size socket for those.
All right, now we've got a secure battery tray again. So at this point, I think we can fly the batteries back in.
smallest batteries that can go in this truck. So we're going to try some Vaseline to keep the corrosion at bay.
that needs to be hammered down. I think this is a good stopping point. Um, so we've got both batteries installed. This is clamped down. I've got the negative terminals um, out on the workbench and I'm just gonna pause for the night. Um, I wanna hit the battery cables when I'm in a good mood and I'm fresh. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this interesting.